Time in physics is defined by its measurement, time is what a clock reads. In classical, non-relativistic physics it is a scalar quantity and, like length, mass, and charge, is usually described as a fundamental quantity. Time can be combined mathematically with other physical quantities to derive other concepts such as motion, kinetic energy and time-dependent fields. Timekeeping is a complex of technological and scientific issues, and part of the foundation of recordkeeping. Markers of time Before there were clocks, time was measured by those physical processes which were understandable to each epoch of civilization. The first appearance see, heliacal rising of Sirius to mark the flooding of the Nile each year. The periodic succession of night and day, seemingly eternally. The position on the horizon of the first appearance of the sun at dawn. The position of the sun in the sky. The marking of the moment of noontime during the day. The length of the shadow cast by a gnomon. Eventually, it became possible to characterize the passage of time with instrumentation, using operational definitions. Simultaneously, our conception of time has evolved, as shown below. The unit of measurement of time, the second. In the International System of Units SI, the unit of time is the second symbol S S. It is a SI base unit, and it has been defined since 1967 as the duration of 9192631770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. This definition is based on the operation of a cesium atomic clock. These clocks became practical for use as primary reference standards after about 1955 and have been in use ever since. The state of the art in timekeeping The UTC timestamp in use worldwide is an atomic time standard. The relative accuracy of such a time standard is currently on the order of 10-15, corresponding to one second in approximately 30 million years. The smallest time step considered theoretically observable is called the Planck time, which is approximately 5.391 times 10-44 seconds, many orders of magnitude below the resolution of current time standards. The cesium atomic clock became practical after 1950 when advances in electronics enabled reliable measurement of the microwave frequencies it generates. As further advances occurred, atomic clock research has progressed to ever higher frequencies, which can provide higher accuracy and higher precision. Clocks based on these techniques have been developed but are not yet in use as primary reference standards. Conceptions of time Galileo, Newton, and most people up until the 20th century thought that time was the same for everyone everywhere. This is the basis for timelines, where time is a parameter. The modern conception of time is based on Einstein's theory of relativity, in which rates of time run differently depending on relative motion, and space and time are merged into space-time, where we live on a world line rather than a timeline. In this view time is a coordinate. According to the prevailing cosmological model of the Big Bang theory time itself began as part of the entire universe about 13.8 billion years ago. <inaudible> Regularities in nature In order to measure time, one can record the number of occurrences events of some periodic phenomenon. The regular recurrences of the seasons, the motions of the sun, moon and stars were noted and tabulated for millennia, before the laws of physics were formulated. The sun was the arbiter of the flow of time, but time was known only to the hour for millennia, hence, the use of the gnomon was known across most of the world, especially Eurasia, and at least as far southward as the jungles of Southeast Asia, in particular, the astronomical observatories maintained for religious purposes became accurate enough to ascertain the regular motions of the stars, and even some of the planets. At first, timekeeping was done by hand by priests, and then for commerce, with watchmen to note time as part of their duties. 
The tabulation of the equinoxes, the sandglass, and the water clock became more and more accurate, and finally reliable. For ships at sea, boys were used to turn the sandglasses and to call the hours. Topic: <laughs> Mechanical clocks. Richard of Wallingford (1292–1336), abbot of St Albans Abbey, famously built a mechanical clock as an astronomical orrery about 1330. By the time of Richard of Wallingford, the use of ratchets and gears allowed the towns of Europe to create mechanisms to display the time on their respective town clocks. By the time of the Scientific Revolution, the clocks became miniaturized enough for families to share a personal clock or perhaps a pocket watch. At first, only kings could afford them. Pendulum clocks were widely used in the 18th and 19th century. They have largely been replaced in general use by quartz and digital clocks. Atomic clocks can theoretically keep accurate time for millions of years. They are appropriate for standards and scientific use. <laughs> Galileo, the flow of time In 1583, Galileo Galilei 1564 discovered that a pendulum's harmonic motion has a constant period, which he learned by timing the motion of a swaying lamp in harmonic motion at Mass at the Cathedral of Pisa, with his pulse. In his Two New Sciences 1638, Galileo used a water clock to measure the time taken for a bronze ball to roll a known distance down an inclined plane. This clock was a large vessel of water placed in an elevated position, to the bottom of this vessel was soldered a pipe of small diameter giving a thin jet of water, which we collected in a small glass during the time of each descent, whether for the whole length of the channel or for a part of its length, the water thus collected was weighed, after each descent, on a very accurate balance, the differences and ratios of these weights gave us the differences and ratios of the times, and this with such accuracy that although the operation was repeated many, many times, there was no appreciable discrepancy in the results." Galileo's experimental setup to measure the literal flow of time, in order to describe the motion of a ball, preceded Isaac Newton's statement in his Principia, I do not define time, space, place and motion, as being well known to all, the Galilean transformations assume that time is the same for all reference frames. Newton's physics, linear time In or around 1665, when Isaac Newton derived the motion of objects falling under gravity, the first clear formulation for mathematical physics of a treatment of time began, linear time, conceived as a universal clock. Absolute, true, and mathematical time, of itself, and from its own nature flows equably without regard to anything external, and by another name is called duration, relative, apparent, and common time, is some sensible and external whether accurate or unequable measure of duration by the means of motion, which is commonly used instead of true time, such as an hour, a day, a month, a year. The water clock mechanism described by Galileo was engineered to provide laminar flow of the water during the experiments, thus providing a constant flow of water for the durations of the experiments, and embodying what Newton called duration. In this section, the relationships listed below treat time as a parameter which serves as an index to the behavior of the physical system under consideration. Because Newton's fluents treat a linear flow of time what he called mathematical time, time could be considered to be a linearly varying parameter, an abstraction of the march of the hours on the face of a clock. Calendars and ship's logs could then be mapped to the march of the hours, days, months, years and centuries. <laughs> Thermodynamics and the paradox of irreversibility By 1798, Benjamin Thompson (1753–1814) had discovered that work could be transformed to heat without limit, a precursor of the conservation of energy or First law of thermodynamics in 1824 Sadi Carnot scientifically analyzed the steam engines with his Carnot cycle, an abstract engine. Rudolf Clausius noted a measure of disorder, or entropy, which affects the continually decreasing amount of free energy which is available to a Carnot engine in the 
Second law of thermodynamics This the continual march of a thermodynamic system, from lesser to greater entropy, at any given temperature, defines an arrow of time. In particular, Stephen Hawking identifies three arrows of time. Psychological arrow of time, our perception of an inexorable flow. Thermodynamic arrow of time, distinguished by the growth of entropy. Cosmological arrow of time, distinguished by the expansion of the universe, entropy is maximum in an isolated thermodynamic system, and increases. In contrast, Erwin Schrödinger pointed out that life depends on a negative entropy flow. Ilya Prigogine stated that other thermodynamic systems which, like life, are also far from equilibrium, can also exhibit stable spatio-temporal structures. Soon afterward, the belisov jabotinsky reactions were reported, which demonstrate oscillating colors in a chemical solution. These non-equilibrium thermodynamic branches reach a bifurcation point, which is unstable, and another thermodynamic branch becomes stable in its stead. Electromagnetism and the speed of light In 1864, James Clerk Maxwell (1831–1879) presented a combined theory of electricity and magnetism. He combined all the laws then known relating to those two phenomena into four equations. These vector calculus equations, which use the del operator, display style nabla, are known as Maxwell's equations for electromagnetism. In free space, that is, space not containing electric charges, the equations take the form using SI units times E equals minus B T display style nabla times math BF E equals FRAC partial math BF B partial T times B equals mu Zero epsilon zero e t equals one c two e t display style nabla times math bf b equals mu underscore zero var epsilon underscore zero frac partial math bf e partial t equals frac one c caret two frac partial math bf e partial t e equals zero display style nabla c dot math bf e equals zero b equals zero display style nabla c d o t math b f b equals zero where epsilon zero and mu zero are the electric permittivity and the magnetic permeability of free space c equals one e zero mu zero display style one s q r t epsilon underscore zero mu underscore zero is the speed of light in free space 299,792,458 meters per second e is the electric field b is the magnetic field these equations allow for solutions in the form of electromagnetic waves the wave is formed by an electric field and a magnetic field oscillating together perpendicular to each other and to the direction of propagation these waves always propagate at the speed of light c, regardless of the velocity of the electric charge that generated them. The fact that light is predicted to always travel at speed c would be incompatible with Galilean relativity if Maxwell's equations were assumed to hold in any inertial frame reference frame with constant velocity, because the Galilean transformations predict the speed to decrease or increase in the reference frame of an observer traveling parallel or antiparallel to the light. It was expected that there was one absolute reference frame, that of the luminiferous ether, in which Maxwell's equations held unmodified in the known form. The Michelson-Morley experiment failed to detect any difference in the relative speed of light due to the motion of the Earth relative to the luminiferous ether, suggesting that Maxwell's equations did, in fact, hold in all frames. In 1875, Hendrik Lorentz (1853–1928) discovered Lorentz transformations, which left Maxwell's equations unchanged, allowing Michelson and Morley's negative result to be explained. 
Henri Poincaré noted the importance of Lorentz's transformation and popularized it. In particular, the railroad car description can be found in Science and Hypothesis, which was published before Einstein's articles of 1905. The Lorentz transformation predicted space contraction and time dilation. Until 1905, the former was interpreted as a physical contraction of objects moving with respect to the ether, due to the modification of the intermolecular forces of electric nature, while the latter was thought to be just a mathematical stipulation. Topic: <laughs> Einstein's physics, space-time. Albert Einstein's 1905 special relativity challenged the notion of absolute time, and could only formulate a definition of synchronization for clocks that mark a linear flow of time. If at the point A of space there is a clock, an observer at A can determine the time values of events in the immediate proximity of A by finding the positions of the hands which are simultaneous with these events. If there is at the point B of space another clock in all respects resembling the one at A, it is possible for an observer at B to determine the time values of events in the immediate neighborhood of B. But it is not possible without further assumption to compare, in respect of time, an event at A with an event at B we have so far defined only an A time and a B time. We have not defined a common time. For A and B, for the latter cannot be defined at all unless we establish by definition that the time required by light to travel from A to B equals the time it requires to travel from B to A. Let a ray of light start at the A time. Ta from A towards B, let it at the B time. TB be reflected at B in the direction of A, and arrive again at A at the A time. Ta. In accordance with definition the two clocks synchronize if T B minus T A equals T A minus T B display style T underscore text B T underscore text A equals T underscore text A T underscore text B text we assume that this definition of synchronism is free from contradictions, and possible for any number of points, and that the following relations are universally valid. If the clock at B synchronizes with the clock at A, the clock at A synchronizes with the clock at B. If the clock at A synchronizes with the clock at B and also with the clock at C, the clocks at B and C also synchronize with each other. Einstein showed that if the speed of light is not changing between reference frames, space and time must be so that the moving observer will measure the same speed of light as the stationary one because velocity is defined by space and time. V equals d r d t. Display style math bf v equals d math bf r over d t text where r is position and t is time. Indeed, the Lorentz transformation for two reference frames in relative motion, whose x-axis is directed in the direction of the relative velocity t equals gamma t minus v x c 2 where gamma equals 1 1 minus v 2 c 2 x equals gamma x minus v t y equals y z equals z display style begin cases t and equals gamma t v x c caret 2 text where gamma equals 1 s q r t 1 v caret 2 c caret 2 x and equals gamma x vermont y and equals y z and equals z end cases can be said to mix space and time in a way similar to the way a euclidean rotation around the z axis mixes x and y coordinates consequences of this include relativity of simultaneity 
More specifically, the Lorentz transformation is a hyperbolic rotation C T x equals cosh phi minus sin phi minus sin phi cosh phi C T x, where phi equals R tan V C. Display style begin p matrix court x end p matrix equals begin p matrix cosh phi end sin phi sin phi end cosh phi end p matrix begin p matrix court x end p matrix text where phi equals operator name R tan F R A C C v C text, which is a change of coordinates in the four-dimensional Minkowski space, a dimension of which is court. In Euclidean space, an ordinary rotation x y equals cos theta minus sin theta sin theta cos theta x y. Display style begin p matrix x y end p matrix equals begin p matrix cos theta and sin theta sin theta and cos theta end p matrix begin p matrix x y end p matrix is the corresponding change of coordinates. The speed of light c can be seen as just a conversion factor needed because we measure the dimensions of spacetime in different units. Units. Since the meter is currently defined in terms of the second, it has the exact value of 299,792,458 meters per second. We would need a similar factor in Euclidean space if, for example, we measured width in nautical miles and depth in feet. In physics, sometimes units of measurement in which c equals 1 are used to simplify equations. Time in a moving reference frame is shown to run more slowly than in a stationary one by the following relation which can be derived by the lorentz transformation by putting increment x topic 0 increment tau increment t delta t equals delta tau 1 minus v 2 c 2 display style delta t equals delta tau over sqrt 1 v caret 2 c caret 2 where increment tau is the time between two events as measured in the moving reference frame in which they occur at the same place e.g. two ticks on a moving clock it is called the proper time between the two events Increment t is the time between these same two events, but as measured in the stationary reference frame. V is the speed of the moving reference frame relative to the stationary one. C is the speed of light. Moving objects therefore are said to show a slower passage of time. This is known as time dilation. These transformations are only valid for two frames at constant relative velocity. Naively applying them to other situations gives rise to such paradoxes as the twin paradox. That paradox can be resolved using for instance Einstein's general theory of relativity, which uses Riemannian geometry, geometry in accelerated, noninertial reference frames. Employing the metric tensor which describes Minkowski space d x 1 2 plus d x 2 2 plus d x 3 2 minus c d t 2 display style left dx caret 1 caret 2 plus dx caret 2 caret 2 plus dx caret 3 caret 2 c d t caret 2 right einstein developed a geometric solution to lorentz's transformation that preserves maxwell's equations his field equations give an exact relationship between the measurements of space and time in a given region of spacetime and the energy density of that region. Einstein's equations predict that time should be altered by the presence of gravitational fields. See the Schwarzschild metric. T equals d t one minus two g m r C two D T two minus one C two one minus two G M R C two minus one D R 
2 minus r 2 c 2 d theta 2 minus r 2 c 2 sin 2 theta d phi 2 Display style t equals frac dt sqrt left one frac two gm rc caret two right dt caret two frac one c caret two left one frac two gm rc caret two right caret minus one doctor caret two frac r caret two c caret two d theta caret two frac r caret two c caret two sin caret two theta d phi caret two where t display style t is the gravitational time dilation of an object at a distance of r display style r d t display style dt is the change in coordinate time or the interval of coordinate time g display style g is the gravitational constant m Display style m is the mass generating the field one minus two g m r c two d t two minus one c two one minus two g M R C two minus one D R two minus R two C two D theta two minus R two C two Sin two theta d phi two display style sqrt left one frac two gm rc caret two right dt caret two frac one c caret two left one frac two gm rc caret two right caret minus one doctor caret two frac r caret two c caret two d theta caret two frac r caret two c caret two sin caret two theta d phi caret two is the change in proper time d tau display style d tau or the interval of proper time or one could use the following simpler approximation d t d tau equals 1 1 minus 2 g m r c 2 Display style frac dt d tau equals frac one sqrt one left frac two gm rc caret two right. That is, the stronger the gravitational field, and thus the larger the acceleration, the more slowly time runs. The predictions of time dilation are confirmed by particle acceleration experiments and cosmic ray evidence, where moving particles decay more slowly than their less energetic counterparts. Gravitational time dilation gives rise to the phenomenon of gravitational redshift and Shapiro signal travel time delays near massive objects such as the Sun. The global positioning system must also adjust signals to account for this effect. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, a freely moving particle traces a history in spacetime that maximizes its proper time. This phenomenon is also referred to as the principle of maximal aging, and was described by Taylor and Wheeler as principle of extremal aging, the path a free object takes between two events in spacetime is the path for which the time lapse between these events, recorded on the object's wristwatch, is an extremum." Einstein's theory was motivated by the assumption that every point in the universe can be treated as a center, and that correspondingly, physics must act the same in all reference frames. 
His simple and elegant theory shows that time is relative to an inertial frame. In an inertial frame, Newton's first law holds, it has its own local geometry, and therefore its own measurements of space and time, there is no universal clock. An act of synchronization must be performed between two systems, at the least. Topic: <laughs> Time in quantum mechanics. There is a time parameter in the equations of quantum mechanics. The Schrödinger equation is h t psi t equals i t psi t display style h t left psi t right wrangle equals i h b a r partial over partial t left psi t right wrangle one solution can be psi e t equals e minus i h t psi e Zero. Display style psi underscore e t wrangle equals e caret i h t h b a r psi underscore e zero wrangle, where e minus i h t display style e caret i h t h b a r is called the time evolution operator, and h is the Hamiltonian. But the Schrödinger picture shown above is equivalent to the Heisenberg picture, which enjoys a similarity to the Poisson brackets of classical mechanics. The Poisson brackets are superseded by a non-zero commutator, say h a for observable a, and Hamiltonian h d d t a equals i minus one a h plus a t c l a s s i c a l display style frac d dt a equals i h b a r caret minus 1 a h plus left frac partial a partial t right underscore mathrm classical this equation denotes an uncertainty relation in quantum physics. For example, with time, the observable a, the energy e from the Hamiltonian h gives delta e delta t two display style delta e delta t geq frac h bar two, where delta e display style delta e is the uncertainty in energy delta t display style delta t is the uncertainty in time display style hbar is planck's constant the more precisely one measures the duration of a sequence of events the less precisely one can measure the energy associated with that sequence and vice versa this equation is different from the standard uncertainty principle because time is not an operator in quantum mechanics Corresponding commutator relations also hold for momentum p and position q, which are conjugate variables of each other, along with a corresponding uncertainty principle in momentum and position, similar to the energy and time relation above. Quantum mechanics explains the properties of the periodic table of the elements. Starting with Otto Stern's and Walter Gerlach's experiment with molecular beams in a magnetic field, Isidore Rabi (1898–1988) was able to modulate the magnetic resonance of the beam. In 1945, Rabi then suggested that this technique be the basis of a clock using the resonant frequency of an atomic beam. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Dynamical systems. See dynamical systems and chaos theory, dissipative structures. One could say that time is a parameterization of a dynamical system that allows the geometry of the system to be manifested and operated on. It has been asserted that time is an implicit consequence of chaos, i.e., nonlinearity, irreversibility, the characteristic time, or rate of information entropy production, of a system. Mandelbrot introduces intrinsic time in his book Multifractals and 1, F Noise. Uh, 
Topic: <laughs> Signaling Signaling is one application of the electromagnetic waves described above. In general, a signal is part of communication between parties and places. One example might be a yellow ribbon tied to a tree, or the ringing of a church bell. A signal can be part of a conversation, which involves a protocol. Another signal might be the position of the hour hand on a town clock or a railway station. An interested party might wish to view that clock, to learn the time. See, time ball, an early form of time signal. We as observers can still signal different parties and places as long as we live within their past light cone. But we cannot receive signals from those parties and places outside our past light cone. Along with the formulation of the equations for the electromagnetic wave, the field of telecommunication could be founded. In 19th century telegraphy, electrical circuits, some spanning continents and oceans, could transmit codes, simple dots, dashes and spaces. From this, a series of technical issues have emerged, see category, synchronization. But it is safe to say that our signaling systems can be only approximately synchronized, a plesiochronous condition, from which jitter need be eliminated. That said, systems can be synchronized at an engineering approximation, using technologies like GPS. The GPS satellites must account for the effects of gravitation and other relativistic factors in their circuitry. See, self-clocking signal. Topic: <laughs> Technology for timekeeping standards. The primary time standard in the US is currently NIST F1, a laser-cooled seas fountain, the latest in a series of time and frequency standards, from the ammonia-based atomic clock 1949 to the cesium-based NBS1 1952 to NIST 7 1993. The respective clock uncertainty declined from 10,000 nanoseconds per day to 0.5 nanoseconds per day in five decades. In 2001 the clock uncertainty for NIST F1 was 0.1 nanoseconds per day. Development of increasingly accurate frequency standards is underway. In this time and frequency standard, a population of cesium atoms is laser cooled to temperatures of 1 microkelvin. The atoms collect in a ball shaped by six lasers, two for each spatial dimension, vertical up, down, horizontal left, right, and back, forth. The vertical lasers push the cesium ball through a microwave cavity. As the ball is cooled, the cesium population cools to its ground state and emits light at its natural frequency, stated in the definition of second above. Eleven physical effects are accounted for in the emissions from the cesium population, which are then controlled for in the NIST F1 clock. These results are reported to BIPM. Additionally, a reference hydrogen maser is also reported to BIPM as a frequency standard for TI International Atomic Time. The measurement of time is overseen by BIPM Bureau International des Poids et Measures, located in Sèvres, France, which ensures uniformity of measurements and their traceability to the International System of Units SI worldwide. BIPM operates under authority of the Meter Convention, a diplomatic treaty between 51 nations, the member states of the convention, through a series of consultative committees, whose members are the respective national metrology laboratories. <laughs> Time in cosmology The equations of general relativity predict a non-static universe. However, Einstein accepted only a static universe, and modified the Einstein field equation to reflect this by adding the cosmological constant, which he later described as the biggest mistake of his life. But in 1927, Georges Lemaitre (1894–1966) argued, on the basis of general relativity, that the universe originated in a primordial explosion. At the Fifth Solvay Conference that year, Einstein brushed him off with. Vos calculs sont corrects, mais votre physique est abominable. Your math is correct, but your physics is abominable. In 1929, Edwin Hubble announced his discovery of the expanding universe. The current generally accepted cosmological model, the Lambda CDM model, has a positive cosmological constant and thus not only an expanding universe but an accelerating expanding universe. If the universe were expanding, then it must have been much smaller and therefore hotter and denser in the past. 
George Gamow (1904–1968) hypothesized that the abundance of the elements in the periodic table of the elements might be accounted for by nuclear reactions in a hot, dense universe. He was disputed by Fred Hoyle (1915–2001), who invented the term "Big Bang" to disparage it. Fermi and others noted that this process would have stopped after only the light elements were created, and thus did not account for the abundance of heavier elements. Gamow's prediction was a 5 to 10 Kelvin black body radiation temperature for the universe, after it cooled during the expansion. This was corroborated by Penzias and Wilson in 1965. Subsequent experiments arrived at a 2.7 Kelvin's temperature, corresponding to an age of the universe of 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang. This dramatic result has raised issues, what happened between the singularity of the Big Bang and the Planck time, which, after all, is the smallest observable time. When might have time separated out from the spacetime foam, there are only hints based on broken symmetries see spontaneous symmetry breaking, timeline of the Big Bang, and the articles in category, physical cosmology. General relativity gave us our modern notion of the expanding universe that started in the Big Bang. Using relativity and quantum theory, we have been able to roughly reconstruct the history of the universe. In our epoch, during which electromagnetic waves can propagate without being disturbed by conductors or charges, we can see the stars, at great distances from us, in the night sky. Before this epoch, there was a time, 300,000 years after the Big Bang, during which starlight would not have been visible. Reprise Ilya Prigogine's reprise is, "...time precedes existence", in contrast to the views of Newton, of Einstein, and of quantum physics, which offer a symmetric view of time as discussed above, Prigogine points out that statistical and thermodynamic physics can explain irreversible phenomena, as well as the arrow of time and the Big Bang. See also Relativistic dynamics Category – Systems of units <laughs>